instantly we could see again that we're dealing with lung even though most of the rung, lung is replaced by inflammatory cells, necrotic debris, fibrin, there are still some areas where we could see outlines of alveoli. Uh, and we can also see that some of the alveoli are a little over distended or what we would call emphysematous. Nevertheless, we can see that the lung is about oh, 70 or 80 percent replaced in which the uh, alveolar architecture is destroyed by these areas over here which you can describe as uh, having a lot of either hemorrhage or necrosis uh, having a lot of inflammatory cells and um, let's just kind of take a look at them here's one let's look at this one what is going on here well, we could see that uh, we are once again dealing with our old friends, the granulomas, because here is a fairly well-defined area in which you have perhaps some necrosis, but basically a pretty well-focused area of uh, histiocytes. You could see giant cells multinucleated here here, 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 kind of like more at the periphery of this. And I think you'll agree that there's these little round spaces in the middle, and perhaps there's other inflammatory cells here like neutrophils and lymphocytes. This is a classical granuloma. And if you would like to call it uh, centrally necrotic or even caseating, that would be okay too, because it looks like in the area, uh, central areas, the cytoplasm is kind of fuzzy and you can't make out cells too well. Well, what are these funny little round things? Are they fat? Uh, I don't know what they are, but uh, let's uh, go back and uh, think logically for a minute. When you see granulomas, in, especially in the lung, but really anywhere, you should think of three or four things instantly that come to your mind. TB, fungi, and foreign bodies. And of course, in the lung, you'd have to add sarcoid to the list as well. And you know these are granulomas because they have really nice histiocytes, and the histiocytes have a lot of granules in them and multiple nuclei. But in addition, you see these little round areas, some of which are surrounded by uh, histiocytes or giant cells, like here and here, and some of which aren't. These are classical uh, fungal yeast forms. So we, we know we're dealing with a granulomatous disease of the lung, extensively destructive, and is characterized by nice little uh, slightly refractile balls. Of course, we haven't stained this with fungal stains yet, but if we stained it with a simple PAS stain, these little balls would all be nice and red. This is really the only common uh, systemic pulmonary fungal infection that looks like this. This is blastomycosis, and sometimes blastomycosis uh, can be divided into North and South American types, but who cares? From a morphologic point of view, it's classical granulomas, perhaps some necrosis, and all these little round uh, yeast balls, which are so characteristic of, of blastomycosis. Uh, and once again, you think uh, systemic or deep uh, or, and or pulmonary infection, think of three things in terms of fungi, histoblastococcidio, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidiomycosis. Of the three, only blastomycosis looks like this. Thank you very much.